Hi, and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to quickly and easily create a pretty cool 2D snow effect using Unity's particle system. As always, my goal is to help you create a good looking effect that you'll be able to completely customize to fit your project. Let's jump right into it. I'm pretty much starting from scratch here. All I've done is create a new 2D project and added a background game object with a sprite renderer component to show my background image. The source of our snow will be a Unity particle system, so let's create one. Right click in the scene hierarchy and select Create Empty to create a new game object. I'll name my game object something like Snow Generator. I can see that it's been created off center, so I'll head over to the inspector in the top right corner, click the gear icon on the transform component and select Reset. Now it's time to add a particle system component to our Snow Generator game object. Click Add Component in the inspector and search for and select Particle System. Now, while you have your Snow Generator game object selected in the scene hierarchy, you should be able to see some weird particle effects happening. To understand what's going on here, toggle from 2D to 3D mode towards the top of the editor. You can see that the particles are being emitted from the center of my background and are moving in a positive Z direction. What we really want is for the particle system to be slightly in front of the background and for the particles to move down the Y axis. To do that, I'll change the Z value of the Snow Generator game object's position to negative 1. In the particle system component, I'll change the start speed to 0 and increase the gravity modifier to 1. At least now we have particles falling in front of our background from top to bottom. Next, we'd like our particles to start falling from the top of the scene. That's pretty easy. Just increase the Y value of your snow generator game object's position so that it sits above the background. We also want the particles to emit across the entire width of our scene. Go back to the particle system component and expand the shape category. I'll change the shape to box and increase the X scale of that box to stretch across our background. If you look back at the scene preview, you can get a pretty good idea of what your emitter looks like. Now that we have the emitter set up how we like, it's time to focus on the particles. First, let's tweak the size. These snowflakes are way too big right now. Near the top of your particle system component, you should see a start size field. Click the arrow on the right side of that field and select random between two constants. By providing a range of sizes for our snowflakes, we can create the effect of depth with our snow. I'll choose between 0.1 and 0.25, but pick whatever fits your scene the best. Next up is the start rotation field. We'll also be providing a range between two constants here so that each of our snowflakes will look a bit more unique when they're generated. I'll pick between 0 and 90. I think it would also look nice if our snow rotated a bit as it fell. To do that, check the rotation over lifetime checkbox and open up that section. I don't really mind this value at 45, so I think I'm going to leave it, but play around and see if you can find something you might like even more. Until now, we've been relying on gravity to pull our particles down the y-axis. We're actually going to give this up for something that gives us a bit more control over our snowflake movement. Change the gravity modifier back to zero and open up the velocity over lifetime section. Check the box to enable this effect, and for the linear movement row at the top, again select random between two constants. What I want here is for the snowflakes to always fall down, but for some to fall more to the left or to the right. To achieve this, I'll plug in negative 1 and 1 for the x values and negative 2 for both of the y values. If you check out your scene, you'll see something that already looks a lot more like snow. The last major effect we're going to add will make all the difference in terms of making this look a lot more like real snow. As you know, snowflakes are very lightweight and can be jostled around by the slightest of breezes. To imitate that, we're going to introduce noise into the flake's flight path. Open up the noise section and enable this effect. Now you can play around quite a bit in here to get the effect that you want, but I'll show you what I've done. Check the separate axes checkbox and set the X and Y values to 0.25 and the Z value to 0. Change the frequency value to 1 and the quality to medium 2D. Now go back and check out your particles. I think this really makes all the difference for this effect. We'll finish by just touching things up a bit. Right now we don't have enough snow and it's not falling all the way to the bottom. To add more snow, open up the emission section and increase the rate over time. I'll bump it up to 30. To get the flakes to fall all the way to the bottom, increase the start lifetime value near the top. A value of around 7 seems to do it for me. Now this would all be just about perfect if the snowflakes weren't square and purple. We'll start by fixing the color. If you don't have a specific sprite you want to use for your snowflakes, you just need to create a material for the white color. In my project explorer, I like to create a materials folder and create my new material in there. I'll name it something like Snowflake Material, and I'll change the shader type to Sprites Default. The tint color is already white, so we're pretty much ready to use it. Go back to the inspector for your Snow Generator game object, open the Renderer section at the bottom of your Particle System component, and drag your material in. Now, your snow is white. 
What I'd really recommend you do is spend about two minutes to create a cool little snowflake sprite. This is the one I made for my game, super simple. If you have one imported into your project, head back towards your snowflake material and change the shader type back to standard. Drag your snowflake art into the box next to the albedo property. Then change the shader type back to sprites default. Just like that, you now have great looking snowflakes. Here's the finished product. I think it's hard to beat for how easy it is to set up. Hope you guys head back into the particle system component and tweak it to make it look even better for your project. Thanks so much for watching and I hope this helped. If you enjoyed the video or have suggestions, please let me know with the thumbs and in the comments and feel free to subscribe for more tutorials, devlogs, and game dev live streams. Thanks again and see you in the next one.